Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with feijoada. That's right, we're doing Brazil's national dish for this year's good luck New Year's Day dinner. And you'll have to check the blog to read about this American tradition of serving beans and usually greens on New Year's Day for good luck. But anyway, this is an incredibly delicious bean and meat stew, something that's been requested many times, and this is how I do mine. So step one, we want to soak a pound of black beans overnight. That's going to make them cook faster and be easier to digest, which is always appreciated. All right, we're going to drain those. We're going to throw those in a big, heavy pot with a couple quarts of cold water. No seasoning, no salt at this point. All right, so we're going to place that over medium, high heat, and bring it up to a simmer. If you want to skim the foam, go ahead. I don't know if it makes a difference or not. I do it by habit. And we're going to simmer this for about an hour and a half to two hours before we add the meat. So just turn it down to low, keep it at a simmer while we prep the rest of the ingredients, which is mostly meat. So let's meet the meat. I have some smoked bacon, some fresh sweet Italian sausage, some spicy Portuguese linguiça, some smoked pork chops, also known as smoked pork loin, and some dried beef, also known as beef jerky. And by the way, thank you beef jerky makers for putting do not eat on this package. I totally thought that was a piece of jerky and was just about to eat it. So for your beef jerky, we're just gonna go ahead and chop this into small pieces. All right, some people soak this overnight first. I don't, I like to just cut it nice and small. It totally softens up in the stew as it cooks. We're gonna take our beef jerky, we're gonna add it to our simmering beans along with a bay leaf. All right, so we're gonna stir that in. We're gonna go back over to continue prepping our meat. The pork, I'm just going to cut in large chunks. And by the way, save the bones. If it came with bones, we'll throw that into our stew, of course. All right, so I'm going to chunk that up. I'm going to slice my bacon in nice big pieces. I'm going to go ahead and cut my linguiça in chunks. The Italian sausage, you don't have to do anything with yet. So bottom line, just cut your meat up in chunks. Not too complicated. Like I said, we're going to add those pork chopped bones into the simmering beans. And then all we're going to do is let these beans simmer for about an hour, 45 minutes to two hours. And after that much time, they should look just about like this. They're still going to be quite firm, but you can, with a little pressure, crush it with your finger. So they're almost cooked, but not quite. So again, that's going to take about two hours. But during that simmering time, you're just not sitting around. You're prepping the rest of the ingredients. So we're going to take our bacon and put it in a dry saute pan over medium heat. We're going to cook it not quite crisp, kind of like that. It's going to start getting crisp around the edges, but it's still going to be fairly fatty. All right, at that point, I'm going to add my linguiça and my Italian sausage and just give that a nice browning. As it browns, I'm going to remove that to a bowl. You can see my pork loin there. I didn't brown that. You could if you want, but I thought that would be fine as is. All right, I'm going to finish browning my Italian sausage. Of course, I'm going to chop those up too. And our meat is officially prepped. Now, you can see the onions and the garlic in the background. That's the next step. Add that to the pan with all the fat reserved. All right, do not throw away that fat. I'm gonna add my onions and garlic. I'm gonna cook that on medium heat until translucent and soft. And those onions are gonna deglaze the pan of any sausagey goodness. And it's funny, the procedure is kind of reversed. You think you do the onions and then the meat and then the beans, but here it's the other way around, which makes sense because in Brazil, everything's kind of reversed. Water swirls down the drain the other way. Their summers are winter and Bikini models actually try to gain weight in their butt. So they really do things a little differently down there. All right, I'm going to season with some black pepper, some cayenne, some ground cumin, some ground coriander, and a big handful of Italian parsley. I'm going to give that another two minutes to kind of wake up those spices. And then it's time to bring all these amazing ingredients together. So we're going to go over to our pot where, again, our beans have simmered for about two hours. We're going to stir in our onion spice mixture. We're going to dump in all our meats. All right, we're going to give that a stir, and we're going to check our liquid level. There should be enough liquid to come just over the top of the meat, so I'm going to add a little bit here. The liquid should just come up to the top. All right, bring that back to a simmer, and then adjust your heat maybe to medium-low, and we're going to cook that for about an hour or until the beans are very, very, very soft and everything starts to thicken up a little bit. All right, and of course, give it a stir once in a while. Now, while that's happening... We're going to make a little bit of a garnish. Traditionally, this stew is garnished with some toasted cassava flour, but there's two problems with that. Number one, I don't know what that is, and number two, I'm out of it. So what I'm going to do is toast some breadcrumbs in olive oil. When that got nice and crispy and golden brown, I added some grated orange zest and some fresh Italian parsley, and I'm going to use that to top my feijoada with. And I have it on good authority that some people garnish this stew with orange slices, so I think I'm totally within my rights to include some orange zest in this. And that's ready. All right, back over to our feijoada. It's now been simmering for about 45 minutes. You can see it's starting to thicken up. Those beans are really, really well cooked. And then one last trick that's optional, but I like to do it. 
Take a potato masher and just mash a few of the beans against the bottom of the pot and let it simmer for another 10 or 15 minutes. And you'll see it thickens it up a little bit more. For me, it gives it a really, really beautiful texture. Of course, you're going to taste and adjust the seasonings. It may need salt. It may not. I give mine a little pinch of salt. It really didn't need much. And that's it. Feijoada. Ladle that stuff up into a bowl. You're going to be required by law to serve this with white rice and hopefully some braised greens. We're going to sprinkle over our toasted breadcrumb mixture. And that was spectacularly delicious. One taste of this and you're like, oh, that's why it's the national dish. I get it. Totally makes sense. Just a really amazing stew. Anyway, I could wax poetic for hours about this, but I won't. And again, serving some kind of bean dish, usually with greens on New Year's Day, is an old American tradition to ensure prosperity and good luck in the new year, which of course I wish upon all of you. So I really hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.